Um, yeah, I'm going to play a little bit the devil's advocate, uh, probably the German advocate in that sense. Um, uh, basically, three questions. Uh, first of all, I think you, uh, in some of your analysis, I think you you link the crisis to other things that probably happened even before. For instance, anti-European <coughs> parties, they also in UK, <coughs> uh, in Denmark, they're not part of the Eurozone. They also existed before the crisis, and particularly strong in the Netherlands or Denmark. So. I didn't really get that argument, how that links really to the euro crisis. Um, then the compressed wages. Um, but you also have to recognize it's much more equal in, in Germany. So uh, kind of, uh, you know, look at Ireland that has the highest inequality of uh, pre-tax income, you know. 51% live in poverty before taxes. So, uh, so when you say increase wages, you also increase the divide between low wage and high wage uh, earners it is, if you look at those uh, I think so how do you really want to balance it in a way and I think actually Germany if you look, probably look at more media, median wages and uh, mean wages uh, it's actually probably a good success story to despite all the problems and also there has been more wage inequality after all the hard reforms but still it's actually comparatively low you know and more, more equal and then uh, the more tricky one is um, I think, I mean, Angela Merkel really wanted to unite Europe, I think, through the bailout. I think that was at least their, her attempt. What happened is probably, you know, you, you, you described the uh, fractures and so on quite well. Uh, but then why did Greece not leave? And also in your solutions, you didn't have a topic, a good exit. An exit of the Eurozone, that would be, you know, that has to be institutionalized. So under which conditions <coughs> could Greece leave? And there were uh, suggestions on the table, even Charlotte made them quite uh, publicly after uh, the recent bailout. So uh, I think there is actually kind of also a lot of discussion going on how to, to, to make a country leave the Eurozone. And I think no one really has a solution for that. And I think that should, you know, that means, of course, and then the debt relief is possible after, uh, if, uh, you know, uh, so I think that's uh, a little bit kind of, uh, you didn't really address that issue. Okay, well, I didn't address it, but anyway. Um, First of all, uh, you're right that anti-EU parties existed prior to the crisis. What is true, if you look at Eurobarometer polls, is that uh, the collapse in support for the EU in general, for EU institutions in particular, for the belief that European integration has been a good thing, um, uh, across the Eurozone, including in countries such as Spain and Italy, which were primarily previously overwhelmingly a pro-EU, but also in countries which were skeptical beforehand, like France uh, and the Netherlands. And you look actually, France is now almost, French are almost as skeptical uh, as the Brits are, which is saying something. So um, I, I think my point uh, stands. Second of all, in terms of um, uh, compression of wages, uh, I, I think your point about wage distribution is frankly uh, irrelevant. Um, uh, the point is that as a deliberate policy starting by a tripartite agreement between government <coughs> unions and companies in 1999, uh, um, there was a sustained uh, effort to hold down wages. Uh, and the effect of that has been to beggar Germans themselves because they're no better off than they were 23 years ago, and to skew the German economy and then the Eurozone economy as a whole. Because what happens when you hold down wages, you get huge corporate surpluses. Now, if those companies were then to invest those surpluses within uh, Germany, uh, at least then you would get future growth and uh, with luck also rising wages. Instead of that, partly because consumption is depressed because wages are low and partly because um, of rigidities, which means there aren't attractive investment opportunities, that money then goes overseas. Had it been invested productively, for example, in you know, factories in uh, Spain uh, and Italy, uh, then you could again have seen a positive dynamic. Unfortunately, it goes through banks that lend it badly uh, and you end up with the crisis. Now, post-crisis, you've seen adjustment in countries which previously had large current account services, such as China, where the surplus has shrunk dramatically. And in Germany, you've had the opposite, which you've had the surplus continue to grow. Uh, and now it's even worse because you have all these huge surplus savings um, which previously were recycled to southern Europe which are now uh, invested elsewhere they're part of the reason why we're having an emerging markets crisis uh, emerging and the upshot for the eurozone as a whole uh, is that you have depressed demand and deflationary pressures which in turn make those debts even harder um, uh, to deal with so I think you know um, it's unquestionable that the policies are bad for Germans themselves and they are d d terrible uh, for uh, the eurozone as a whole 
Um, the idea that Chancellor Merkel wanted to unite Europe through um, uh, the bailout, I don't know which bailout you're talking about. If you're talking about the bailout 2010, uh, Chancellor Merkel was initially skeptical. She didn't think it was a good idea. And she was won round from, by two people. First, by German banks, who lobbied ferociously for it. And secondly, by uh, Jean-Claude Trichet, the ECB in particular, who said that, um, uh, and he obviously was acting uh, in large, to a large extent in the interests interest of French banks, um, uh, that uh, this would be disastrous um, uh, for uh, the Eurozone. Now, the question of whether uh, and how a Greece should leave. Now, the first, when you say we have to make a country leave the Euro, I think you are you're, uh, um, uh, showing the heart of the problem. It's not your decision, or let alone Chancellor Merkel, to decide whether or not Greece can continue to use their own currency. And if it is, then they're using a foreign currency. They're using, in effect, a German currency, which is not the basis on which the euro was created. And it's certainly not the legal basis of the euro. And it certainly should not be for, for Wolfgang Schauble or others um, uh, to decide that. Second of all, uh, from a financial stability and um, uh, an economic convergence, convergence point of view, uh, if you have, uh, in effect, um, uh, the political possibility of a country being forced out on the say-so of the Eurogroup, um, uh, uh, or in effect, uh, those people who, which naturally uh, stick to the German line, uh, then in fact, who's going to want to invest in Greece because there's always the possibility hanging over it, it's going to be pushed out. Uh, and indeed, as soon as there's a crisis, you're going to see a repeat of what we saw in 2010-12, which is precisely what the ECB intervened to prevent in 2012 through the OMT, which is why at the Eurogroup, at that faithful Eurogroup at the beginning of July, where Schauble raid this issue, there was a huge shouting match between Draghi and Schauble, because actually if you bring in uh, this exit door, in effect, um, you are making the Eurozone an unstable system again, which is what the OMT um, stabilised. So I think it's a, it's, it's a bad idea. And um, politically, um, it flies in the face of what the Eurozone is meant to be, which is an irrevo irrevocable currency union. Now, is it true in reality that some, at, some country, at some point uh, some country will want to leave? Yes, I think it's quite feasible, because uh, if the misery continues, at some point one country is going to say enough. And Greece, Greeks were too afraid um, uh, of... Uh, the consequences of, leave, consequences of leaving and too distrustful of the economic management of their own government uh, that they wanted to do that. It's quite feasible that the Italians um, uh, will be the ones because they have greater self-confidence um, uh, to do so. Or, or indeed, you know, eventually if things continue as badly as it is, it will be, it will be France because the reaction to the uh, German move in, in July in France was, was also uh, incandescent, or it can indeed happen through the election of a President Le Pen in France if it doesn't come from uh, the establishment parties. Um, and uh, if that happens, it will happen in a, one would hope, an orderly fashion, most likely a chaotic fashion. It, it could be more orderly, um, but you know, Eurozone institutions who want to keep the Euro together have an incentive to make it as costly and disorderly as possible, precisely in order to hold it together. Um, and so, um, one would hope that if a country reached a democratic <coughs> conclusion that it, that, it was going to, what, that it wanted to leave, that its exit from the Eurozone would be facilitated rather than um, uh, frustrated. Perhaps even the country that decides to leave would be Germany, which actually would be the least costly because all that hap you know, Germany would leave, uh, the new Deutschmark um, uh, would soar in value, the debts would still be denominated uh, in euros, so in effect everyone else would get uh, debt relief. Um, uh, and um, it, would, um, uh, it would solve a lot of problems.